as I've promised not too long ago, I'll today be taking a look at the AMD Ryzen 5 3600X. This one obviously, just like the 3600 non-X, comes with the same 6 cores and 12 threads, but is clocked slightly higher. How much more performance that means, we'll find out. And whether or not it is worth it to pay more for the 3600X when you could just get the 3600 for less. Anyway, right now such a 3600X would cost you about 235 US dollars. And when comparing this against what the 3600 costs, about $195, there is quite the difference in price. So it'll be interesting to see how today's X variant does against Intel's offering. After all, from a price point of view, the Core i5-9600K is the 3600X's direct competitor. So can the higher clock help further close the gap to that Intel CPU in games? At first glance, the included cooling solution by AMD this time around seems to be a lot more powerful than what we got with the 3600. While the 3600's Wraith Stealth stock cooler only had a rather small aluminum heatsink to work with, this so-called Wraith Spire sports a lot more aluminum. This also shows when it comes to the temperatures, as you'll see a bit later into the video. As always, I'm testing with the obviously overkill ASRock X570 Tai Chi motherboard, but I can't repeat it often enough, since there still seem to be some people out there that mix things up, Ryzen 3000 does not require the X570 chipset to work, as long as you flashed a newer BIOS version for Zen 2 onto your existing older X470, X370, B450 or even B350 board, you're pretty much good to go. There in fact even are some models out with older chipsets that support Ryzen 3000 right out of the box. Just do some research and you'll find them. For those, however, that have no issue with waiting a bit longer, might want to wait for a newer B550 board to land. Hopefully, those end up being a lot cheaper than those X570 variants. But anyway, for cooling, I'm going to use this gorgeous Castle 240EX AIO liquid cooler by Deepcool. It looks amazing, right? Interesting is this first small comparison between the Ryzen 5 3600 and 3600X. It's obvious these two pretty much are the same CPU, one of them simply being binned for higher clock speeds. Because really, other than the clock speed, on paper there's no difference. As always, I'd like to let you guys know that as usual for all my testing, I'll be testing with Precision Boost Overdrive for short PBO disabled. Same goes for the Intel side of things, MCE, multi-core enhancement has been disabled too. Now here's my side-by-side -side comparison of the achieved clock speeds with different cooling solutions. I'm testing with both the deep cool liquid cooler as well as the stock cooler Wraith Spire. At full load with all cores at work, with the liquid cooler the CPU gets to 4.125 GHz at max. And if the clock speed drops, then we are talking of a straight 4.1 GHz on average. A good result. But so are those with the stock cooler. Now just like I've experienced with the 3600, for a short moment I achieved a higher max clock speed of 4.225 GHz. But what gives us more information are the average values. These are between 4.05 to 4.075 GHz. Of course there were many debates when it comes to AMD's boost clocks, since we didn't quite get what was promised. In my case, with a pretty powerful cooling solution, I'm achieving 4.325 GHz. And with the Wraith Spire stock cooler, it's a tiny little bit lower, a solid 4.3 GHz. But of course I have to admit, my clock speeds aren't completely up to date. Since all the testing has been carried out quite a while ago, I simply didn't get around to produce the videos yet. In the meantime, AMD has released a new Agisa, therefore we got a new BIOS version too, that should take care and fix those boost clocks, so we get what was initially advertised by AMD. But then again, I also gotta say, this mostly only applies to the single core clock speed, and even then, we are mostly talking of just 25 to 75 megahertz that we're missing. So in real life workloads, this small performance boost is barely noticeable at all, since most of the time, more cores are utilized. And this is when we see lower clock speeds anyway. 
Not those turbo clocks for an all-core boost. Same thing applies to Intel, it's normal. This is what I wanted to inform you about, since I'm pretty sure there will be some of you that will have an issue with me for not having tested with the ABBA BIOS. Just know that such a benchmark marathon with this sheer amount of CPUs is not an easy task. But enough whining and justification, I almost forgot my classic, the clock speed comparison with Shadow of the Tomb Raider running. Here we clearly see the 3600X with better cooling easily clocks 50 MHz higher on average as opposed to slightly more inferior cooling. But it's not really a big deal anyway. But now let's get to the benchmarks, what you're actually here for most likely. I wouldn't say we've seen exciting results, at least not if you already were familiar with what the Ryzen 5 3600 can do. Similar to the Ryzen 7 3800X, compared to the 3700X, there's only a very small performance improvement in the case of the 3600X over the 3600. This only is due to the higher clocks. And that is something we probably could tweak ourselves with a regular 3600 non-X by overclocking it. While I don't want to spoil too much yet since I have a separate overclocking video coming for both the 3600 and 3600X, I can tell you getting that 3600 up to 4.2 GHz was a relatively easy task without going for crazy voltages. But that's a topic for another video. Today it's all about the comparison at stock speeds. And I can confirm the 3600 as well as the 3600X really showed their remarkable performance especially in those multi-threaded workloads. Depending on the test, such a Zen 2 based Ryzen 5 does get damn close to what last year's flagship model, the Ryzen 7 2700X has to offer. But it needs to be said that all in all, in rendering aspects and the likes, the 2700X still takes the lead. Things are looking differently when it comes to gaming though. This is where we really get to see what AMD's architectural improvements with Zen 2 bring to the table. Noticeably higher IPC performance, so that of a single core and a good amount more cache. But what makes for a more interesting comparison is when we take the competition Intel into the game. While the 3600 with its current price of about $195 happens to come with the far more superior price to performance ratio, the 3600X at its price of $200. $35 right now doesn't even do that bad as opposed to comparable models by Intel. 
the Core i5-9600K can be had for about $240 too. And once we compare the offered raw performance, we quickly realize the 3600X and tasks such as rendering can no longer be compared with a Core i5, but rather with an i7-9700K 8-core. That one, however, doesn't cost $235, but a whopping $365. So if productivity performance for content creation is of great importance to you, there's actually no way around AMD right now. What comes to the rescue of Intel CPUs, however, tends to be the good old gaming performance. In terms of average frame rates, the 3600X does further close the gap to the i5-9600K, but in the majority of game titles, Intel still remains on top. But noteworthy are those 1% lows, the minimums. These tend to look really good with these Ryzen 3000 CPUs. That's where the 3600X, for instance, often can lead to a smoother gaming experience all in all than it is the case with the i5-9600K or even i7-9700K. But yeah, Intel still remains number one, at least when talking about average FPS. But just to be clear, this can't be expected in each and every title out there. In 2019, since AMD has released such fast 6-core processors with SMT, therefore 12 threads to work with, it's getting harder for me to take a pure 6-core without hyper-threading seriously these days. Well, not from a performance perspective, but rather when it comes to future-proofness. And you should always watch out when the term future-proof is being thrown around. After all, no one of us knows for sure which way games are heading in the future. If you tend to care about how much money you spend and these tests demonstrate in non-gaming scenarios, six cores and six threads seem a little outdated for today's standards, at least when having to pay over $200 for a CPU, that is. Not really a surprise, the 3600X does run slightly hotter than the 3600 does, but both can be cooled quite easily with a decent liquid or air cooler. Even with the included Wraith Spire stock cooler, the 3600X doesn't get too hot. As it was the case with the 3600, with the included Wraith Stealth, the CPU easily goes up there to 87 degrees Celsius. That's not exactly low. Despite the 3600X generally running a bit hotter, the bigger Wraith Spire can keep the temperatures stable at 78 degrees. That's a good enough result. It's just that the Wraith Spire, to me at least, appear to be even louder than the Wraith Stealth was. So not necessarily exciting news for silence freaks among you, but then again, no one should be expecting that anyway. It is fine after all, but I just want to give you a bit of a warning in advance. Results that look really, really good are those of the power draw. In my case, the 3600X, interestingly, practically consumes the same amount of power the 3600 non-X does. Both are great results, especially given how much more raw performance these two Ryzen 5 CPUs offer as opposed to Intel's i5-9600K. As I've said before, when it comes to multi-core performance, we get similar results as to what we see with an i7-9700K costing $365. This makes the power consumption actually look a lot better than it already is. But of course, looking at bare numbers, the i5-9600K would probably consume slightly less power when gaming. To sum things up, I can say that just like the 3600, the 3600X happens to be a damn good all-rounder CPU. It does nothing perfectly, but can do a lot good enough, so that for not really that much amount of money, well, at least depending on who you ask, you can build a pretty epic system with this particular CPU. The bottom line is, if you want the absolute highest average frame rate in this price range when going for a new CPU, go ahead and pick up an i5-9600K. For the same amount of money, you get slightly lower average FPS with AMD, but in return often slightly better minimums. And on top of that, more raw performance, similar to what can be had with the $365 expensive i7-9700K by Intel. For me, it is an easy choice. The win definitely has to go to AMD here. Even though from a price to performance perspective, the 3600X cannot really be recommended. The 3600 non 
X simply steals the show and is the much better deal for its money. But it needs to be said, the Wraith Spire coming with the 3600X is a massive upgrade over the Wraith Stealth that is included with the 3600 Non-X. So paying the extra money can for some of you guys be worth it, simply because of the better cooler depending on how you want to look at this. Nevertheless, I personally would go for the 3600 Non-X. Still, I'm surprised this Ryzen 5 3600X didn't do as bad as I expected it to do, given it's not so spectacular in terms of pricing compared to the 3600. The 3600X certainly makes more sense than the Ryzen 7 3800X does over the 3700X. So understandably, I can't give the 3600X my highest possible award, but gold still seems to be fairly appropriate. And with that being said, thank you for watching.